to let go. What is it that you're holding on? You know there's more love, there's more love here than you've ever known. So just let go, fall in your arms and cry, Jesus. And then you'll fall. Well, welcome everybody. This is Pastor Steve Good with Church of the Good Shepherd in Oswego, Illinois. And along with our other worship leaders, uh, we're glad that you are able to be with us for this hour of praise and prayer as we uh, seek to hear God's word and incorporate that into our lives. I'd like to share a brief announcement to you from the United Methodist Women, and that is that uh, they are sponsoring a food drive for the Kendall County Food Pantry. And so here at the church, we are accepting any non-perishable food item, and we encourage you to call the church office first just to uh, find out for sure when the church is going to be open, and then you can bring it in, put it in the bin that will be in the gathering room. Uh, you've got all October for these donations for any non-perishable food items. Thank you so much. Well, friends, let us take a, a breath as we intentionally bring our hearts and our minds to this sacred space and prepare for worship. Let us hear this word of scripture from from um, the words of Jesus, the water that I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Let us begin our worship now as Cheryl Todd shares the prelude with us.
were brought forth, or the land and the earth were born, from age to age, you are God. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Let us worship God. You're tired of waiting. You prayed all you prayed. Now time's a wasting. There's nothing left. Say, you me some. I've been there before. It's not always easy to be waiting on the Lord. But no matter how long it takes, you're gonna need patience oh, and a little faith. Just say thank you the ocean and the stars You say I love you For being just who you are Believe me so Oh, the Father feels your pain It's not always easy When the Lord tells you to wait But no matter and girls it is children's time get a little closer to the screen how are you today well i've got a question for you think about the grown-ups who live with you in your home uh, they might be parents maybe some other grown-ups like uh, uh, other family members but do you believe that they love you that's my question of course they love you you're awesome who wouldn't who wouldn't uh, and, and since you see them every day, you are reminded how much they love you, right? Okay, so we know that for sure. How about people who live many, many miles away, people you don't see every day? Uh, that could be aunts and uncles, maybe grandparents. Uh, now, even though you don't see them every day, still, you know that they love you also, right? You know that. Long ago, there was a person who loved God very deeply. Uh, but that person was going through a very tough, 
a difficult time, very rough time in their life. And because God seemed so far away to this person, uh, this person did not think God loved them anymore. And they felt awful. And so they wrote these words down. Why are you so far from helping me? From the words of my groaning, why are you so far, oh God? Well, boys and girls, do you think God still loved that person? Well, of course God did. Uh, the person finally realized that God did love them when they started to remember about all the good things God has done in their life and in the lives of God's people. Uh, you know how God saved people, how God gave them life, uh, how God kept them safe, and then, and then the person felt better. So when you feel far from God, and there may be days like that, uh, just remember the good things that God has done for you uh, in the past, and, and then God will feel closer to you in those moments, and God's love will cover you like a blanket. Oh, by the way, uh, that person who finally remembered that uh, God did love them, that person who wrote it down, uh, well, they wrote it in a book that you've heard of. It's called the Bible. And you can find the words that that person wrote down in Psalm 22. Let's pray. Dear Lord, even when you feel far away from us, remind us that you really aren't uh, and that you still love us, Lord. Um, remind us of all the ways that you have taken care of us in the past so that we'll be confident that you are still with us and that you will take care of us in the future as well. Gracious Lord, we thank you for the people in our lives who love us because that's another way that you show your love for us through those people. We thank you in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Thanks, boys and girls. Well, we are so happy that our Sunday school teachers have come back to uh, teach our, our young ones ages three through high school. Sunday school has been happening uh, every Sunday now uh, since uh, uh, just a couple of months ago, and we want to take some time to recognize them and to thank them as well. And so this includes uh, our Sunday school superintendent who watches all over them and helps with the organizing, uh, Ruth Fry. And then our three-year-olds are cared for by Carrie Taylor. Pre-K class is Allison Taylor and Barb Wood. First and second grades, Judy Edinburgh. Third, fourth, and fifth grade, Amanda Sidhu, and junior, senior high, Rachel Conover. Friends, let us recognize these teachers who have responded to God's call in their lives to become workers in the church school, to teach, to administer uh, the work of teaching, and to support the work of teaching. Um, they're called to these ministries, and so they need our support in our prayer. Let us then pray. Lord, you have given us the message of power, and grace, justice, and love. We ask that you provide us your guidance, that we may be learners and teachers together, believing that you are in our midst. And we set apart those who serve in our church school that we have named today. May they serve you in nurturing the spiritual growth of all who are entrusted in their care. Bless each one of them gathered, enabling them to be channels of your grace. This we pray through our teacher and our Lord, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, friends, let us uh, continue to pray as we lift up joys and concerns. And, and certainly we are joyful, as I said, for our Sunday school teachers who are among us and taking care of our young ones. Uh, after being canceled last year, Chicago, the Chicago Marathon is back on. It is happening today, right now on Sunday, um, October the 10th. Over 35,000 people are expected to be running today. 
and they come from all 50 states in the USA and 100 countries around the world. I have friends who are running in the marathon today and who are helping to work the aid stations. Um, let's pray for their health and safety this morning. Uh, may this diverse group of men and women, uh, may they show the world how they can peacefully come together and coexist for a common goal. What a beautiful thing this is. Lord, as we lift up these runners and all those who support them today, we thank you for their witness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And let us lift up our uh, mission effort that the United Methodist women are spearheading sponsoring the food drive for the Kendall County Food Pantry. Uh, may generous hearts meet uh, the needs of hungry families in our area. And Lord, may you bring those efforts together so that they may be effective. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We have some birthdays that We'd like to lift up today for these brothers and sisters celebrating. And uh, today is the birthday of Will Robinson. So happy birthday to Will. Later on this week, we have birthdays for Linda Koloff, for Nancy Lane. Happy birthday. Happy birthday also to Sarah Nadler and to Diane Smith. Happy birthday to Sherilyn Camper, to Rich Jalafo. Carolyn Besh and Bob Constantine. As we lift up all of these brothers and sisters on their special day, we ask for God's blessings to be poured out upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now, friends, let us continue to be in silent prayer that we may lift up those other prayers that are still upon our hearts and listen for God's word to each of us today. Let's continue to pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you for giving us what we need even before we ask. We thank you for caring for us even when we think we can take care of ourselves. We thank you for guiding us even when we try to go our own way. Lord, we depend on you so much more than we realize, but today we, uh, we confess that we do need you. We do lean upon you, and we ask, Lord, that you, uh, that you be our wisdom, that you be our strength, that you be our courage for all the life situations that we face. And, and Lord, as we, uh, as we, accept you more fully into our hearts, into our lives. May we become better witnesses to how you impact our lives in positive ways, even now, as we seek to live out your kingdom in our relationships, in our work, and uh, gracious Lord, even in our quiet time with you. Lord, as we lift up to you all these prayers of the day, we, we do so with a renewed confidence from the faith that we are given through our Lord and Savior, Jesus. And hear us now as we pray that prayer that he taught us, as we say to you, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. 
Amen. Prayer of praise and adoration. Eternal God, you have been our resting place through the ages. Generations come and pass away, but you abide forever. We praise you for your presence among us. You bring us comfort amid our trials, clarity where confusion persists, peace in the midst of conflict, and hope of eternal life. Hear us now as we pay you our tribute in glad adoration that you are God of our lives. Amen. You are not hidden. There's never been a moment you were forgotten. You are not hopeless. Though you have been broken, your innocence stolen, I hear you whisper underneath your breath. I hear your SOS, your SOS. I will send out an find you in the middle of the darkest night it's true I will rescue you there is no distance that cannot be covered over and over you're not defenseless I'll be a shelter I'll be your armor. I hear you whisper underneath your breath. I hear your SOS, your SOS. Hebrews 4, 12 through 16. For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attributes of the heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace and confidence so that we may receive mercy 
and find grace to help us in our time of need. The gospel reading is Mark 10, 17 through 31. As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good, Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony, you shall not defraud, honor your father and mother. Teacher, he declared, all these I have kept since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said, go sell everything you have and give to the poor and you will have treasures in heaven. Then come follow me. At this, the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard is it for the rich to enter the kingdom of God? The disciples were amazed at his words, but Jesus said again, Children, how hard is it to enter the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were even more amazed and said to each other, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. Then Peter spoke up. We have left everything to follow you. Truly, I tell you, Jesus replied, no one who has left home or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for me and the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in this present age. Homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and fields, along with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last first. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, thank you to Diane Clody for being our liturgist today. I've got a sermon to share with you, friends, called Rx for Our Needs. Have you ever been to a, a wedding reception or some other kind of party where you're seated with someone you don't know or don't know very well? Uh, before long, you, you try to introduce yourself, perhaps yelling over the loud music in the room. And in a brief summary, you tell who you are. Uh, you know, you'll say your name. You'll perhaps share the name of your significant other. Uh, you might say the names of your children or talk about your pets, perhaps even show some pictures that you have on your phone. If you're enjoying their company by now, you may even share about some of your favorite leisure activities or your favorite sports team. Now, you've shared some significant things about your life, uh, but you're still holding something back. Uh, you haven't gone far enough to say who you really are on a deeper level. Who are you really? Well, for many people, to answer that question, we'll talk about our work, our employment, our job, or the job that we once held uh, as a way to share who we are, or more significantly, as a primary way that we find our own identity in the world. Our close identification with our work becomes a major reason that we can even get out of bed in the morning to face the world because. This is who we are. Even when we don't feel like it, we got a job to do. One Sunday morning, a mother knocked on her son's bedroom door and said, son, it's time to get up and go to church. I'm not going, the son yelled back through the door. Well, why not, demanded the mother. Because I don't like them and they don't like me, the son said back. But you have to go, the mother urged. Why, the son said. Because, explained the mother, you're 59 years old and you're the pastor. Some days you just can't get past the job title. Uh, of course, being a pastor is more than just a job for me. 
uh, it's a big part of who I am, my identity. It's how I present myself to the world. But, you know, whether your title is a pastor or a teacher, a manufacturer or a truck driver, a computer technician or a firefighter, a homemaker or a carpenter, that title, that, that role still doesn't go deep enough. If I were to introduce myself down to the most basic building block of who I really am, I'd have to say something like, hi, I'm Steve. I'm a child of God. I'm created in God's image. I'm a disciple of Jesus, baptized in his name, called forth to serve in grateful response to his promise of salvation. So what's your name? I usually don't go around introducing myself quite that way, uh, but inside I, I know that that's who I am, and that makes a big difference in terms of the words I use and how I conduct myself. I know I am more than my title, more than my job, more than my paycheck, more than my bank account, more than my car, more than my house. I'm more than my membership in a club, in an association, or in a social media group. I'm more than than all of that. We, we all are more than what we do. We're even more than the role that we play in important relationships in our lives. Think about this. We're, we're more than a spouse. We're more than a parent. We're more than a child. We're more than a grandparent. As important as those roles are to our own identity, uh, they can also change over time. And when that happens, it can be very disorienting. Uh, for instance, when those kids grow up and we experience the empty nest syndrome, or when our parents die, or when we have a major change at our job, or when we retire from a job that we look to for our main identity. When these things happen, we might have an identity crisis. You know, who am I now? Now what am I known for? What is my role? What is my purpose these days? It can be very upsetting. And that's why, as people of faith, uh, we always need to remember and nurture our most basic identity as a child of God, as a disciple of Jesus, loved, forgiven, and called to serve as we obey God's will. Amen? Because that doesn't change. Well, the rich man from our gospel story today didn't know that he had an identity issue, but it was at the root of his problem, that identity issue. He was looking for a pat on the back from Jesus. He wanted the Messiah to give him a gold star for his life of consistently following the rules of the faith. The rich man wanted to hear some assurance that he would indeed receive eternal life. The rich man seemed to have built a watertight case for himself. He had followed the commandments of the Torah faithfully ever since he was a teenager. But Jesus could not tell him what he wanted to hear. Because Jesus perceived that the man's heart was not as wrapped up in loving God as it was wrapped up in his own identity as a rich pretty heard of him. Perhaps he had witnessed the man in the community. But he knew. Jesus knew that the man found his true identity, his security, that he found his trust in his own money, in his own things, more than he found his identity in God. Jesus knew that. Now, Jesus did not scorn the man. He did not humiliate him in public or try to make an example of him. The Bible says that Jesus looked upon him and loved him. He wanted the rich man to experience the joy of God's promises. But he knew 
He knew that the man's self-image uh, was so wrapped up in his bank account, in his stuff, in his buying power, that it would always be a stumbling block for any, any true spiritual growth. And so, with a sincere love, Jesus gently said, you lack one thing. Go and sell all that you have. Give the money to the poor. You will have treasure in heaven. Come and follow me. All the rich man could do at that point was hang his head and walk away because there was, there was just no way. There was no way he was ready to do all that. Even the disciples, Jesus' own disciples, were shocked at that advice. Well, who then can be saved, they said. You know, we may wonder the same thing, right? Jesus, you set the bar too high this time. Uh, who's going to want to come to church with that kind of a commitment level preached from the pulpit? We're going to lose members. Give us some hope here, Jesus. Yeah, we may think, reflecting on our own lives, I may not have as much money as the rich man, or maybe I do. But all the same, I've never killed anyone either. I, and I love my kids, and I've never stolen uh, for many years, I've lived the Ten Commandments, at least a high percentage of them. Isn't that good enough, Jesus? Now, if I've made any of you uncomfortable at, at this point in the sermon, let me give you some words of comfort. Uh, Jesus' answer to the rich man may not be what he would tell you or I. Whew. That's a relief to hear. After all, remember, when Jesus welcomed the sinner Zacchaeus in another story, when he welcomed Zacchaeus into his fellowship, he did not make any special requirements for Zacchaeus. He didn't say, give all your money away, Zacchaeus. No, not at all. He just said, welcome. But when Zacchaeus, in his joy, committed to give half of his wealth to the poor, uh, not all of his wealth, mind you, just half of it, which is still a lot, and then repay anybody who he has defrauded, well, that was enough for Jesus to see his change of heart and declare that indeed Zach was saved. But for the rich man in today's story, and to make it simpler, can we just call him Rich? Let's just say that's his name. Uh, for Rich, Jesus had diagnosed the problem as the wrong attitude toward his wealth. The prescription for a cure was to give it all to the poor, not just 10%, not 50%, but all of it, then follow Jesus. But Rich did not want to take that medicine. It was exactly what the doctor ordered, but that pill, he felt, was just too big to swallow. Rich had spent too much time and energy investing himself in his things. He would have done anything else that Jesus asked of him. But to let go of this image of himself as a man of wealth and status, so that was just too much for Rich. And sadly, he walked away from Jesus. Now, keep in mind, it's not that Rich was not doing enough. It's not that he wasn't being responsible or honest. Those were not the issues. It's not that he wasn't good to his family or to his community. Uh, Rich's problem wasn't that he didn't do enough for God. It's that he didn't trust God enough. Rich found his true security, his comfort, his assurance, his identity in his possessions, in his paychecks, in his investments, but not in God. Perhaps, as one writer suggests, Jesus simply wanted Rich to become like a child before God, to strip himself of all those things that would provide false security so that he might find his true security in God. Now, that may have seemed impossible to Rich, but the good news, my friends, is that with God, 
all things are possible. So instead of cleverly trying to come up with a way to get a big camel through the little eye of the needle, uh, and, and thus avoiding any need to change our ways, instead of looking for some kind of loophole, why don't we just let go of whatever it is that's blocking us from receiving God's promises and let ourselves instead feel the embrace of God's grace. Speaking of needles, what if we had a vaccine approved by the CDC, of course, uh, that would quell our constant urge for more money, for more stuff, for more status, more respect, for more false security. Uh, if such a vaccine were available, would you get it? My friends, the grace of God is that vaccine, that medicine that we, that we need. Every time we read the Bible or worship in church, online or in person, um, that's the medicine that God wants us to have. Every time we pray or give our offerings or receive communion or serve in Jesus' name, uh, John Wesley calls all these things the means of grace. For it is that shot in the arm of God's grace that reminds us who we really are at the core, and that is a child of God, a disciple of Jesus, thankful for what God has done for us and how God calls us to live as a saved people, even in the midst of the challenges of our lives. For with God, all things are possible. Can you say that last part with me, my friends? For with God, all things are possible. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, I, uh, I thank you for faithfully continuing to, to give your offerings, whether that's mailing it into the church or using our e-giving method. Um, so allow me to offer this prayer dedication for those offerings. Gracious Lord, we have intentionally given these gifts, these first fruits of our labor, as a sign of thanksgiving, as a sign that we put our trust and security in you. So, Lord, we ask that you would bless us as a result and, and, uh, and bless our church as we seek to have it strengthened, uh, that its impact upon our congregation and our community um, may continue to be strong. We pray this in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus. Amen. Let us continue with our worship, my friends, with one more song from Reborn.
thank you, my friends, for joining us in this hour of worship. And I want to thank uh, especially our worship leaders, uh, liturgist Diane Clody, Cheryl Todd, uh, Reborn, Praise Band, and our producer, Jesse Livingston. And friends, as we leave this time of intentional worship, to enter the world as intentional disciples of Jesus, uh, let us take that prescription of life that the Lord gives us, that we may identify first and foremost as God's children and as disciples of Jesus, who gives us his peace this day and forevermore. Amen. Mm -hmm.